A montage of photographs depicting students and teachers. A graphic of the Perkins logo and the words, Teachable Moments. A title, Tactile Science Lesson Using Play-Doh with Kate Fraser. Hello, I'm Kate Fraser. I'm a teacher at Perkins School for the Blind. Today we're going to be talking about using Play-Doh to quickly illustrate concepts in the science classroom for a student who is visually impaired. A tray sits on a table. On the tray are two containers of Play-Doh, a ball of Play-Doh studded with jewel-like objects, two beanpod shaped objects, two pod shapes encircled by a yellow band of Play-Doh, three spheres of purple Play-Doh, along with a mound of purple Play-Doh. Kate picks up the pink studded ball and describes what it depicts. Play-Doh can be commercially purchased or you can make your own. It's easy to work with. In this example, the first example here, we have an example from chemistry. This is a model of, a historical model of the um, atom where J.J. Thompson believed that it was positive matter with electro electrons stuck in it. He called it the plum pudding model. And this gives the student a chance to have a hands-on example of what that model looked like. Also from chemistry. Kate uses three purple spheres to describe a water molecule. We can talk about this being an oxygen atom, these being smaller hydrogen atoms, and talk about the bonding of the hydrogen with the oxygen. Here, we have some Play-Doh that is hardened, but the student could also do this in class, or you could do it right at the moment and form a chromosome, including the band. Kate holds the bean pod shaped objects wrapped in the yellow band. That forms around the chromosome before the cell begins to divide. And these are chromatids. Also in biology, <clears throat> imagine this is a cell and you're teaching the concept of cell division, cell fission for a unicellular organism. In earth science, let's say you want to show valleys and mountains. Kate takes a mound of Play-Doh and depresses a section in the center, creating a swale between two peaks. And reshape it and make a valley between two mountains. So this works both for the teacher to illustrate a concept or the student to be able to demonstrate understanding of a concept. And again, in science, we use models to illustrate things that are either too small or too large to be easily seen. So in this case, you can make models that can be easily examined by a student with a visual impairment. And that's our teachable moment for today about using Play-Doh in the science classroom for the student who's visually impaired. Thank you.